started with some information that you may not know about voter suppression. Now, as everybody knows, there are 50 states in the United States. Between 2011 and 2012, there are only five states that did not see voter suppression legislation introduced. Oregon, Utah, Wyoming, North Dakota, and Kentucky. We saw a number of states introduce photo ID laws, even though they were not necessarily successful in all states in passing that legislation. We had restrictive legislation vetoed by the governors of Montana, Minnesota, Missouri, and North Carolina. And we saw a number of states that require proof of citizenship to vote. My first guest, Chris Melody Fields from the Lawyers Committee on Civil Rights, is going to talk to us about voter registration, how we can get more voters registered, and she's also going to talk to us about what we can do to be able to ensure we can cast our vote. So, Chris, Welcome to the show. Uh, it's an honor to be on. Thank you. Well, as you know, um, many states um, in this weekend and on October 9th, um, the registration deadline is coming up. Um, so, you know, we do have a couple of days in, in many states um, to still register people to vote. Uh, many groups like uh, the League of Women Voters, Rock the Vote, Project Vote, NAACP, um, you know, national organizations uh, are working with their state. Um, uh, affiliates to register people to vote. You know, if it's a public area, you know, you are um, able to go and, uh, you know, register people to vote. If it's private property, um, obviously you need to ask permission. Um, but, you know, uh, people in the next, uh, the next, over the weekend, over Columbus Day weekend, in the next few weeks, um, we want to make sure that people are registered to vote. And if you have questions about what your uh, registration deadline is, you can go to our website at uh, And um, We want to make sure that every person that is an eligible voter has the opportunity to cast a ballot and participate in our democracy. So if you have a question of whether you're registered to vote um, or what your status is, call the 1-866-OUR-VOTE hotline. That's 1-866-687-8683. It's actually live seven days a week, uh, 9 to 7 on weekdays and 10 to 6 on weekends. And voters can call that to get questions about voter registration, verify their registration status, uh, find out about early vote. Um, basically, any question um, you have about voting and your right to vote, you can call that hotline, and we have highly trained volunteers there to help you. No. That is ab that's absolutely fantastic. So we have links to your website on our community website. So you can get information about all the resources and websites that we mention on this show at www.pdacommunity.org. So, Chris, by all means, continue letting us know about the registration and all the other phenomenal resources that are available out there. Well, you know, Election Protection is a national coalition. We work with a number of organizations. It's led by the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights under law. Um, you know, we will have uh, the uh, one eight six six our vote hotline. It's live from now until Election Day. Um, we'll have national call centers here in Washington, D.C., New York, uh, in San Francisco, and then we'll have local call centers throughout the country. Um, on, before, before and on Election Day, um, we will have a, a number of lines across the country where voters can call in um, about any question that they have, um, any um, problems that they're encountering at the polls. Um, they can use that as a resource. And I just want to reiterate, if you have any question, call the 1-866-OUR-VOTE hotline. We'll also have field programs in a number of states, about 20 states. Um, you know, there are battleground states and then also uh, places where um, high uh, minority populations or there's been a history of past problems. There will be a legal field. There will be mobile legal volunteers that will actually be monitoring the precincts and helping voters at the polls. You know, dealing with the long lines, asking any questions. That is a resource. You know, a firsthand uh, uh, resource to, to voters in a number of these states. And then you can also, you know, go to our website to to find out where our programs will be. 
Um, you know, if you are um, an attorney or a grassroots, uh, you know, if you're an activist that wants to get involved, we're working with Common Cause. So if you want to be a poll monitor in your state and want to get engaged and want to help in your community, um, we really want to make sure that people are educated and empowered this election cycle about what their rights are and the resources that are available to them. Um, we also, you know, we're living in a digital age, um, and we know that a lot young people and um, actually uh, uh, minority communities have really um, started to adopt smartphones. So we have a new, resources, a new resource this year is the Election Protection Smartphone app, and that's available for all smartphones. It actually just went live today in the um, Apple iTunes Store. Um, so if you search Elect Protect um, with your iPhone or if you have an Android, uh, also search Election Protection, you can download that app. You can use it to verify the, your registration status as we get closer to election day, find your polling lo location, call um, or report a problem through 1-866-OUR-VOTE, um, register to vote. Um, you'll be access to a 50-state FAQ so you know what the laws are in your state and ha get educated. But we really want this to be an empowerment tool. It's not just for you and, you, you know, your individual use. We want you to go out to your community. We want you to, you know, get 10 of your friends, let them know about what the ID laws are in their state so they are educated and they are prepared on Election Day. Um, you know, we want people to be out in their community. Um, you know, we're doing our work here, um, but we really want people to be engaged um, and out in their communities, uh, making sure that people know what their rights are and are, are empowered on Election Day. And that's fantastic. And I like what Reverend Jackson said, and that was don't vote alone. When you go and vote, take five or ten people with you. Take your entire family. Now, I've got a question that was sent in from one of our listeners, and that question was specific to provisional ballots. What are they, and do they count? Um, uh, so provisional um, ballots were uh, created under the Help America Vote Act, and this was a, a result of the 2000 election. We wanted to make sure that um, if a person went to, to their precinct, they knew that they were supposed to be on um, the rolls, um, that there would be an, uh, sort of another ballot for them to be able um, to, uh, to, to, to vote on Election Day. I, I think the one thing I, I really want to emphasize that, you know, if you know you registered to vote, um, if you um, are sure that you should be on that roll, call 1-866-OUR-VOTE. We will work um, and make sure, you know, we, there, sometimes there, uh, there are problems getting that updated list so we can work with the counties to make sure that you can cast a regular ballot. We always want to make sure that people can cast um, a regular ballot. If you do um, get a provisional ballot, um, you know, based on your state, uh, you, need, you, you need to be also asked what is the procedure when you're at the polls, if you're asked to, uh, cast, a, you are asked to cast a provisional ballot, what is the pre procedure, what, how, what is the follow-up that you have to do, ask for the paper that they're supposed to tell you um, how, what you need to do to make sure that provisional ballot is counted. Um, so I just want to make sure that your listeners know uh, if they are given a provisional ballot that they ask, um, what the requirements are to make sure that that ballot is cast, and, and if there are any questions, to call 1-866-OUR-VOTE. Hey, Andrea, this is Terrence. Um, I just wanted to ask our guest, um, what do you think is the, um, the impact of the Pennsylvania ruling uh, regarding uh, voter ID access? Um, uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Sure. I mean, obviously, it's it's a it's a partial victory. We think it. We are very pleased with the judge's ruling that um, the program will not be. Uh, you know, it's essentially um, on. There's a temporary injunction for the November election. So if you are a P Pennsylvania voter, you will be requested, but you are not required to show I photo ID. If you are asked to show photo ID, make sure and you do not have it. You are allowed to vote a regular ballot. You do not have to vote a provisional ballot. I want people to know that, that if you're in, P in Pennsylvania, they ask for your photo ID and you don't have it, you are allowed to vote a regular ballot. But we still want to encourage people to get the ID that is needed to vote because this injunction is only through the November election. So after the, this general election, people, the law you know, will stand as it is. 
So we want people to go out and get their ID if possible um, so they're prepared after the general election. You know, I think it, you know, it is very important that if folks have um, any questions, if they are asked to give a provisional ballot in Pennsylvania, to immediately call the 1-866-HOUR vote hotline. You know, we'll also have, um, you know, poll monitors in, in Philadelphia County, um, Pittsburgh, uh, and Harrisburg, and in some surrounding counties of Philadelphia. If you see someone with an election protection T-shirt, you know, and you, you, they're there to help you. And, you know, if you're given a provisional ballot, definitely work with them um, to make sure that you vote a regular ballot. So what do you have to do to get an election protection T-shirt? <laughs> uh, what do you, you, who do you need in that? you you got to be one of our volunteers. So if you are, uh, uh, you know, either have Just a legal I'll background. Volunteer for you every, I volunteer for you every day, whether you know it. <laughs> Well, 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 all right, now, now that Terrence is working on getting his T-shirt, um, <laughs> one of the interesting things that's going on in Virginia is we've been told we have um, folks that are going to be working at the polls that our poll workers are basically being told if someone reports without the proper ID to immediately direct them to get a provisional ballot as opposed to offering them the option to go home and get the appropriate ID. I mean, if you have the time on election day and you have the uh, you can get that appropriate ID, absolutely do it. Do not vote a provisional ballot. If you have the time to go back home, get the ID that you need in the state of Virginia, do it. And and we want, I mean the most important thing is we want people to be able to cast a meaningful ballot that will be counted. Um, so ask for, you know, go home, get that ID if you can, and cast a regular ballot. I've got another caller on the line, uh, Randall Holmes from Tempe, Arizona. Randall heads up our Clean, Fair, and Transparent Elections issue team. Randall, do you have a question or a comment? Oh, hey, thanks, Andrea. Hi, Terrence. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm also with uh, Arizona Advocacy Network, which uh, struck down our proof of citizenship requirement to register to vote in Arizona. That covers the Ninth Circuit, because uh, it happened in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Uh, we're going to be fielding uh, election protection monitors, uh, observers, who will be uh, credentialed by our county uh, Democratic Party chairs. Uh, to be inside the polling places that's necessary in Arizona. You have to be credentialed to be inside. And I just want to uh, uh, elaborate on uh, provisional ballots uh, under the HABA Act. As, uh, as was mentioned, uh, you can vote a provisional ballot anywhere in the United States, and it will count if you're in your home precinct where you're registered to vote or where you should be registered to vote. And uh, it, it, if you're not on the signature roster or you're not on the rolls in the precinct where you go, uh, make sure you're in the right precinct and call 866-R to verify that you're in the right precinct. Uh, so when you uh, vote a provisional ballot, it will count. If you have, a, have to vote a conditional provisional ballot, which means you don't have the proper ID perhaps and you have to return with the proper ID, uh, that, that's a different thing, and, and you have to uh, uh, bring the ID. This is the way it is in Arizona, anyway. You have five days to appear with the proper ID, or you can go home and get it before Election Day. But uh, provisional ballots do count in Arizona. They count after Election Day, but they uh, they adjudicate each one and decide if, if it's uh, really registered. But make sure you're in your home precinct. Excellent. I believe... Sarah Mullen has just joined us on the line. Let me bring Sarah up. So, Sarah, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. This is the Associate Director of the ACLU of Pennsylvania. Welcome, Sarah. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. My question is, why was Viviette Applewhite um, in danger of losing her right to vote? Okay, well, for those who don't know, Viviette Applewhite is our lead plaintiff in our case. She's a 93-year-old African-American woman who actually marched with Martin Luther King at one time. And uh, she couldn't get an ID initially because under the law you had to have certain forms of ID, and one of them was a PennDOT ID. And she doesn't have any of the background documents you needed to get a PennDOT ID. So this would be, well, she wouldn't get a driver's license, but an official non-driver's photo ID from the state. 
because she didn't have her birth certificate. She'd had her purse stolen, and she'd kept all of her ID in there. She didn't have a Social Security card, uh, those kinds of things that you need to get an ID. She had tried on several occasions to get an ID and couldn't get it. 